This is the Advanced Styling Studio, which is devoted primarily to styling years ahead. These are some of the men who spin daydreams, the kind of daydreams that have a way of coming true. They sketch plans and drawings by the thousands to get the few designs that show real promise for production. Here's what happens to the rejects. They end up in locked waste paper baskets. These are then emptied into disposable paper bags under the watchful eyes of security guards. And then, still under security supervision, the unwanted sketches and drawings are burned. Yes, some daydreams go up in smoke, but those that show promise reach the attention of Mr. Ford and Jean Bourdonnais, Vice President and Director of Styling. Next, they call in the chief stylist from the four styling studios. At these sessions, protocol goes out the window. More likely than not, they'll make important changes in the design approach to get the one theme which will capture the imagination of the buying public. They finally agree on a car to which they have given the code name, the Astrion. Now Mr. Ford carries the ball to the styling committee, consisting of other top executives. This includes brothers Henry, chairman of the board, and Benson Ford, who heads the company's dealer policy board. Yes, the Astrion will also be a far cry from the Model A. They like what they see and styling gets the green light to proceed with the design. The first step in the building of a full-size clay model is a wooden skeleton or armature. After the armature has been finished, the next step is to cover it with clay, which obviously is easier to work with than metal. Pound after pound of warm clay is applied, spread, and skillfully modeled. Before they are through, some 5,000 pounds of clay and some 6,000 man-hours will have gone into the making of this one clay model. In the hands of artists such as these, the Astrion begins to take shape. For the most part, accessories for the interior of the car are specially designed and made by hand in the metal shop. Also in the shop, machinist Bob Miller is turning what will be the Astrion's tail light. What appears to be a metal box in the hands of fabricator Louis Ellis is actually a new type of door handle, a tab or bar that depresses to release the door catch. Once the lights are added, the Astrion really begins to look like a car. The work of the clay modelers is almost finished. All that remains is to recheck the final measurements. In styling terminology, this is called taking points. And even for this clay model, measurements are accurate to one ten thousandth of an inch. Meanwhile, Mr. Bordenay has the difficult task of approving fabrics and color for presentation to top management. In the trim shop, upholsterers are at work on the fabrics to be used for the interior of the Astrion. The next step is called die knocking. Over the clay window area, a thin sheet of special plastic material is applied to simulate the appearance of windows. Aluminum foil is used to simulate the grill and bumper. Properly applied, it's difficult to tell from chrome. The Astrion is given a crest of its own. And now the final step, the paint job. And for this clay model, sheets of painted Dynock are applied to the body surfaces. Once applied, the excess material will be trimmed. And in a very short time, 
the Astreon has been painted right in the studio. The Astreon is wheeled out to the styling center courtyard. The first to see it are the chief stylists. Not until the Astreon has passed their inspection will it be shown to the styling committee. For each car line, the same cycle is repeated. Sketches, renderings, and clay models in order to give management the best possible designs from which to make the final choice. Security demands that even rejected models be destroyed completely. For nothing in the automotive business is more carefully guarded than the products of the styling studios. Some advanced models are carried further and made fully operational. This one is the Futura. The roof is a clear plastic double bubble canopy hinged at the rear. The aerodynamics of the design are tested in a huge wind tunnel, which the engineers call Hurricane Road. This giant fan, 24 feet in diameter, can generate winds up to 125 miles per hour, with gusts up to 140. It moves three million cubic feet of air through the tunnel every 60 seconds. They freeze the Futura time and again to prove its operation at 40 degrees below zero. These men who conceive and supervise the testing of parts and procedures must certainly be rated among the unsung, unseen heroes of the automotive industry. This test involves the brake dynamometer. <laughs> Having survived its tests in Hurricane Road, the Futura is taken to the Dearborn Proving Ground. Test driver Johnny Stoppa flicks a switch to lower the plastic canopy and prepares to test the car on the high-speed track. Although the Futura is still a long way from the production line, the stylists are looking far beyond to a car that might operate on exotic fuels and electrical power. Even the remotest possibilities give scope to the vivid imaginations of the advanced designers. 